course, with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and the haughty Hyo Silver, the Lone Ranger. <laughs> Before this exciting adventure, a word from our sponsor. A cloud of dust, a flash of light, and a hearty Hayo Morita. The Lone Stranger eats again. All right, partner, reach and get away from my cache of silver bullets. Uh. Pronto. You're the one who's been taking my silver bullets? No, me just trading silver bullets for golden rich Merita sandwich bread. What? Well, it's better than wampum. I know, but you've got to stop taking my silver bullets for my six guns and putting in Merita. Oh, me sorry. Huh, sorry. Today I fired at a bandit and hit him with a bologna sandwich. Uh, get away? No, I caught him when he stopped for mustard. Oh, uh, that's good. So was the sandwich. Uh, all sandwiches taste better on Marita. All right, Pronto. Here's your Marita sandwich bread. Now empty your pockets, faithful Indian companion. Mm. Tune in again for those thrilling days of yesteryear. The Lone Stranger Eats Again. Hi, old Marita! Away! Faithful Indian companion Toto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, you silver. Let's go, big fellow. Are you silver? A tall, nice looking fellow, about 25 years of age, entered the cafe in Flint Rock. He stood a moment looking around, then approached the barkeep. Hi, mister. Something for you? Good afternoon. Hey, I'd like to... haven't I seen you around here before? No, this is my first trip to Flint Rock. <laughs> Still think I've seen you around. Funny, but I... Now I know. You look like a fellow who used to live here in Flint Rock. A fellow by the name of Dave Layton. You knew Dave Layton? Yeah, I used to come in here a lot. Mighty nice hombre, too. But poor Layton isn't here anymore, though. Took a bullet from ambush. Never did find out who did it. I know. You see, I'm Dave Layton's brother, Tom. Oh, so that's it. You fixing to stay in Flint Rock? It's possible. I hope to start up the freight line my brother used to run. Maybe someday I'll find the hombre who shot him. Sam Wellman, stage and freight line owner, ran the town of Flint Rock with an iron hand. He had several hired gunslingers who were ever ready to do his bidding. That evening, two of his men entered Sam's office. Well, boys, seems like you have something on your minds. What is it? Yeah, we got news for you, boss. Yeah, boss, wait till you hear. Well, I'm waiting, Jim. You tell him, Nick. All right. A young fella in town fixing to give you competition, boss. Competition? Uh huh. Remember Dave Layton, who tried to start a stage and freight line a couple of months ago? Of course I remember. He ended up in Boot Hill. Yeah. Well, his brother Tom has come here to take over where he left off. He's doing a lot of talking around town, too. That's right. He said he's going to find the hombre who gunned his brother. And that he's going to start up the freight line again. Hmm. Very interesting. He's already got an in with John Orwell, the mine owner. You see, it seems Tom Layton went to school in St. Louis with Orwell's daughter, Sally. He's going after the contract to haul ore from the mine to the railroad at half your price. Orwell's no fool. You'll make Layton prove he can bring in the ore first. And you're going to let him go ahead and try? <laughs> sure. We'll get the new contract with Orwell. And even at a higher price than we charge now. Before I'm through with Tom Layton, he'll wish he'd never come to Flint Rock. (laughs) 
That evening, Tom Layton was a visitor at the home of John Orwell on the edge of town. Tom was saying, Mr. Orwell, I came here to Flint Rock to take over the freight line my brother started. I know I can make a go of it if I do hauling for your company. Tom, Sally already told me why you came here. But you're up against a going concern. Wellman has plenty of men and good equipment. Though I do admit his prices are mighty high. I have three good wagons, and I know I'll be able to give good service at almost half the cost to you. You should give Tom a chance, Dad. I know you'll make good. Thanks, Sally. Well, I don't know. Please, Dad. Frankly, I do believe it's bad for the West to have someone like Wellman forcing out competition. If I thought it would do any good, I might let Tom try it. I know I can bring in as much and bring it in as fast as Wellman did. Well, if you do, Tom, then we'll talk about a contract at the end of the two weeks. It was almost dusk when Toto, Indian companion to the Lone Ranger, left town and returned to their temporary camp in the hills with supplies. Oh, Scout. Oh, fella. Easy, Scout. I'll help you unload these saddlebags, Toto. Ah, me here, brother of Leighton Fuller, who was murdered two months ago, came to Flint Rock. Him, Tom Leighton. He came to hunt his brother's killer? Maybe. But me find out him fixing to start freight line. Brother tried to start. I see. There's two fellas in cafe a while ago. Then talk plenty loud. Say it's not good for anyone to work for a newcomer. Oh, who are they? Me hear them work for Wellman outfit. Oh, well, men will do us anything to keep away competition. That's right. Late will have a hard time getting business. Then say him get chance to bring ore from mine starting Saturday. You mean Leighton has the oil contract? No, no. Him get chance to show what him do. Then him get contract maybe after two weeks. I hope he makes it. Wellman's had his way too long. Ah. Leighton, no girl whose father owned mine. Him give young fella a chance. Wellman might cause trouble. Ah. I'll wear a cowpoke disguise tonight, Toto. Then we'll go on the towel and see how things are going. Later that night, the Lone Ranger disguised his features and changed his clothing. Then he and Toto rode into Flint Rock and pulled rain in the shadows near the cafe. They entered the cafe and sat at a secluded table. Tom Layton was talking to a group of men nearby. That's all I hear around this town, Wellman. But because of him, that no one will drive my wagons? I reckon maybe it is at that, Layton. He's got an established freight line. But you were just a tenderfoot trying to hold in. I ought to resent that, but I'm out here looking for trouble. Maybe you'll get plenty of it without looking. You try to carry through your ideas. I'll take that chance. Uh-huh. <laughs> I understand your brother took his chance, too. And lost. What do you know about my brother? Uh, everybody around here knows Dave Layton was shot. That's why you better be careful, or... Or what? If you're threatening me... Get your hands off of me, Layton. My brother, maybe you'll get it right now. Huh? Hold it, you. Hey, what... Go see your gun and be quick. Who are you to be butting in, mister? If you want gunplay, you have it. Put up your gun, I said. Yeah. I wasn't going to use it. But he was asking for it just the same. <laughs> Come on, Jim. Let's get out of here. Thanks, mister. You sure got the drop on him fast. He seems to have a quick temper. He might have shot you. Say, hey, stranger, maybe you'd like a job. I could use your friend, too, the Indian. Thanks. We'd go outside and talk it over, if you like. Sure, let's go. Come on, Tonto. Uh, After leaving the cafe, the Lone Ranger and Tonto talked to Tom Layton for a few moments on the porch and promised to help him with his wagons the next day. When they parted, Tom went into the cafe and the Lone Ranger and Tonto mounted Silver and Scout to return to their camp. Come on, Silver! Come Scout! had ridden at a fast pace and soon reached the grove in which they had pitched camp. Oh, 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 oh,
while Toto unsettled the horses, the Lone Ranger removed his disguise and changed into his usual clothes. Then, as the two men prepared to roll into their blankets, the great horse Silver raised his head and whinnied softly. <coughs> Silver, give one and keep us happy. Yes. He's looking toward the gully to the left. Ah. Well, may not see anyone yet. The moonlight is bright, Miss Clay. Let's head for the shadows and fast. Ah. From the gully, Nick and Jim saw the masked man and Indian move quickly toward the shadows. Jim spoke. Hey, look, Nick. They suspect something, Nick. Hey, that tall one isn't a cowpoke. Look, he's masked. See, that's right. Let's gun him anyway. Hurry. All right. Try your gun. This is it. Right. <laughs> Continue our Lone Ranger adventure in just a moment. A cloud of dust, a flash of light, and a hearty Hayo Morita. The Lone Stranger eats again. Well, Pronto, ever been to a picnic before? Mm, at Little Bighorn. That was no picnic. Maybe not for cavalry. Why, it's the Lone Stranger and Pronto. Hello, ma'am. Hello. <laughs> Can I get you boys some Marita enriched hot dog and hamburger buns? Much obliged, ma'am. Here you are. How come there's no hot dog or hamburger in these buns? Maybe they're vegetarians. Why, goodness gracious, no. We just love the baked while you sleep fresh taste so much. We never put anything in our Marita hot dog and hamburger buns. Well, they're very delicious. Thank you and goodbye, ma'am. Oh, my. He handed me a silver bullet. Me take that. Indian giver. Tune in again for those thrilling days of yesteryear. The Lone Stranger Eats Again. Hi, old Marita. Away! Now to continue... The Lone Ranger and Tonto, alerted by Silver's warning, suddenly sprang into the shadows just as the shots rang out. Drawing their guns, they fired toward the spot where the gun flashes had been seen. Let's get away from here. Come on. Get up. Get up. Bullet must have creased one of them. We'll saddle the horses and pick up their trail. Let's go. Uh. Two gunmen, Nick and Jim, were reporting to Sam Wellman in his office in town. They told him about the trouble in the cafe and of what happened at the Lone Ranger's camp. When Sam had heard the details, he spoke. Uh-huh. Well, Layton's taking three wagons out to the mine in the morning to bring in some more. I figure he'll drive one of them, and the other two men will drive the other two wagons. Yeah, I reckon that's right. Yeah, but what I can't figure is why that cowpoke changed his clothes after they got to that camp and then put on a mask. I can figure that one out for you, Nick. You mentioned that cowpoke rode a white stallion out of town. The Indian rode a paint, didn't you? Yeah, that's right. You know, ordinarily I would have pulled you out for starting trouble in the cafe with Layton. But under the circumstances, you turned up something mighty interesting and important. Oh, yeah? Well, what's that? Ever hear of the Lone Ranger? Sure I have, boss. Hey, you don't think... Yep, I think that masked man is the Lone Ranger. You don't seem to be much worried, boss. No, I'm not. You see, he doesn't know I've learned that he and that cowpoke are one and the same. He'll probably appear to drive the wagon tomorrow disguised again as that cowpoke. Well, suppose he does. He'll give us a chance not only to get rid of Leighton and his wagons, but also the Indian and the Lone Ranger. Meanwhile, the Lone Ranger and Tonto had managed to follow the trail of the two gunmen to Wellman's office. They waited in the shadows until Nick and Jim came out. They watched as the two men went to a shed behind the office and then came out carrying something, which they put in their saddlebags. They're up to something, Tonto. Ah. Then worked for Wellman. Maybe him plan something. We'll soon find out. They're getting ready to mount. All right, we'll follow them. Let's go. Uh-huh. Easy, big fella. Easy, easy fella. Come on, Silver. Get him off the car. The masked man and Indian were careful not to let Nick and Jim know they were being followed. They watched from the darkness of a grove as the two gunmen worked on the bluff. Finally, Nick and Jim finished their work and left. Then the Lone Ranger and Tonto walked forward to see what they had been doing. The trail we'll follow tomorrow from the mine runs under this bluff, Tonto. Ah. 
Here's where they were working. Mm-hmm. I suspected as much. Blasting powder. Oh. Fuse. Go back there. Yes, to a point from which they could watch the approach of the wagons. Oh, it's good we find out. If them set off blast, we all get killed. I'll disconnect the fuse and the blasting powder. There. We we'll try to catch them red-handed lighting the fuse. You think them tell Wellman about mask? Yes. They can see it plainly in the moonlight. What's more, Wellman is apt to guess who I am. Then you'll not use disguise to drive wagons. Yes, I will. So the miners won't be curious. All right, let's go. In the morning, I have a few instructions to give you and Tom Layton. The following morning, the Lone Ranger, again disguised and dressed as a cowpoke, drove one of the wagons to the mine while Tom and Toto drove the other two. Silver and Scout were on tie lines behind the wagons. Later, after the wagons were loaded, they started back along the trail to town. Just before they rounded a bend near the bluff, the Lone Ranger pulled the lead wagon to a stop and called the others for a talk. Hey, 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 hey. Hold on, Tom, come here a minute. Uh, we, we near bluff. I hope they don't know their plan has been discovered. Well, they have to take that chance, Tom. Did you speak to Mr. Orwell? Yes, he's following with some of the miners. Good. Around the bend, we'll be inside of those gunmen for a few minutes. Then as we approach the bluff, we'll be hidden from view. That's right. We run tire lines from the horses on the second wagon to the rear of the first one, so they'll stay in line. And why do you do that? Because I want you to take my place in the lead wagon, Toto. Tom will drive the last wagon. The second one will be driverless. And where do you go? That bluff is flat on top and slopes down either side. Uh-huh. I'm going up to the bluff to catch them in the act of lighting the fuse. Now, let's get the wagon moving. Right. Get up there! Oh, get a few minutes later on the bluff, Nick spoke to Sam Wellman. Well, I see the wagons moving along close together. Yeah. It'll soon be time to light the fuse. And all we have to do is wait for what happens. Sure. But we better beat it as soon as it's over. We'll leave just as soon as I'm sure that Indian and the Lone Ranger are buried alive. Several minutes went by as the three killers waited tensely. The wagons had passed from sight and were about to move under the bluff. Finally, Sam spoke. All right, Nick. Set a match to that fuse. All right. There. Reach both of you. Hey, look, the cowpoke. He sneaked up the side of the slope. You reach, mister. I'm right behind you. <laughs> Good work, Jim. Bring him over here, Jim. I see you've already lighted the fuse. But you're in for a surprise, Wellman. You mean you're in for a surprise, mister. We checked when we came back here. and Found the fuse disconnected, so we fixed it again. Then the the powder will explode in a couple of minutes now. The Lone Ranger realized his plan had failed, and that in a short time, Toto and Tom would be killed by the explosion. It'll soon be there. Yeah, the wagon should be just beneath now. The Lone Ranger still held his guns in his upraised hands. Once more, he glanced at Jim, who held a gun behind him. Then he went into action. Kicking back suddenly, he caught Jim on the shin with his spur. Stop you! As Jim, taken completely by surprise, bent over in pain, the Lone Ranger fired. He had aimed at the fuse between the blasting powder and the glowing end. His bullet severed the fuse a short distance ahead of the powder. Hey, his bullets cut the fuse off, huh? Fire! Oh, I'm hit! Here, oh. fuse your gun. What's your guess, one? Oh, no, my shoulder! Watch for it coming up the slope. I'm getting out of here. You're not leaving, Wilman. For a moment, the Lone Ranger, his guns holstered, fought Wellman while the miners watched. Wellman was a big man, and he fought with fury, but the Lone Ranger was more than a match for him. This should do it. Take it. Oh, my God, you really stopped him, mister. Our plan almost fell through, Tom. It reconnected the fuse of the blasting powder. What is all this, anyway? These men planned to set off an explosion to stop Tom. Yeah, we would have been killed, buried alive. It was Wellman's plan. Nick and I just worked for him. Wellman's plan, eh? That's right. You'll find blasting powder on the edge of the bluff with a burnt-out fuse nearby. They plan to stop Tom's wagons by burying them under tons of dirt. Well, I'll take a look at it. 
Yes, the cowpoke's right. There is glass and powder here. Uh, enough to blow tons of dirt over the trail below. Uh, uh, How on earth did you find out, Tom? My friends there found out about it last night. The cowpoke and the Indian. I sure owe you two a lot. And you have steady jobs if you want them. Well, thanks, Tom, but we have other work to do. Tom, I think you'll get my contract for the hauling. And we'll take these killers to the sheriff for some explaining. You might have Wellman explain how his men got rid of Tom's brother. Hey, you can't pin that on us. Wellman paid us to ambush Dave Layton. Jim, you crazy fool. Stop shooting off your mouth. You're just fixing a noose for yourself. Uh, and for you and the other fellow, too, Wellman. Yeah, the sheriff will sure be glad to question these hombres. Imagine Sam Wellman stooping to murder to keep away competition. By Jiminy, I'm Hold it, Tom, again. hold it. Let the law take its course. Yes, he's right, Tom. And, uh... I reckon Sally'd think twice before she'd, well, uh, let a killer come to court her. Sally? What? Say, Mr. Orwell, you mean you'd be willing to let Sally... I make... promised Sally I'd bring you home to dinner, Tom. If you continue to get the wagons through for the next two weeks, I reckon you'll get the contract. Gosh, that ought to be easy now without Wellman to interfere. I sure have a lot to thank this cowpoke for. Mr. I don't even know your name, but I... You just... mean you didn't know who he is? Oh, never mind that. Wellman, men like you never learn that others in the West deserve a chance to make good. You've learned it now, and it's, and it's too late. Goodbye, Tom. Perhaps when we come this way again, congratulations will be in order. I hope so. Maybe you'll have a chance to be best man. <laughs> we'll see. Goodbye and good luck. Goodbye, Goodbye Mr. Tom. Hey, Wellman, you acted a minute ago as if you knew who that hombre is. Well, speak up. Who is he? Why, you young fool. He's the only hombre who could have helped a tenderfoot competitor like you get a chance at that contract in spite of my plans. But he's just a drifting cowpoke. How can he help my eye? We saw him last night when he had his other clothes and a mask on. A mask? Oh, I'm wearing a mask. But why should he wear a mask if he's not an outlaw? Why should he... Why don't you tell him, Nick? That cowpoke stuff is a fake. That hombre's really the Lone Ranger. Hello there. I'd like to just take a minute to talk to you about Marita Brown and Serve Rolls. As you know, Marita means all that's fresh and good that goes into and comes out of your oven. And Marita Brown and Serve Rolls are the ones that bake to a flaky golden brown in just six minutes. There are 12 delicious Marita Brown and Serve Rolls in every package. And if you don't use them all right away, that's all right, too. Marita guarantees freshness for several days after you buy them. Of course, in your freezer, they'll last indefinitely. But don't wait for company to have Marita Brown and Serves. Your family would love to have a basket of fresh, steaming hot rolls with breakfast, or lunch, or dinner. It'll mean you care. And what a delicious way to show your love. After all, your family deserves the best. They deserve Marita. Marita Brown and Serve Rolls. Listen to the Lone Ranger. In the cabin, Ruth and Hal had temporarily cleaned the place. The flickering light from the single lamp on the table cast weird shadows around the large front room, and Ruth shivered whenever she glanced at the bleak, uncurtained windows. Hal, I just thought, what do we do about water? There must be a well around here. Well, in fact, I remember Mr. Logan saying there was a well behind the cabin. I'll go get some water. Hal, do you think it's safe to go out there in the dark? Of course. Hal walked around the cabin to the back and peered through the darkness to locate the well. Oh, I think I see it right back there. As Hal slowly approached the outline of the covered well, a figure moved out from behind a tree. Then a blow crashed down upon the back of his head. Let's go on. <laughs> He'll sure wonder what hit him when he wakes up. Now I better get back to the others. <laughs> Listen to The Lone Ranger, brought to you by special recording at this same time. The Lone Ranger, a 
copyrighted feature of The Lone Ranger Incorporated is produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated. The part of The Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Foy. Thank you.